lucky enough to serve on the scholarship committee with the Bill Post. And uh, when I found about his passing, I knew it was time for me to come back to meetings. He was one of a kind um, and dedicated to that committee, put a lot of work in, and I will miss him very much. Um, I wasn't going to say anything, but Michael stood up, and it's been two years for me, too. And I had the exact same response when I got the email, which is like, it's time to come back. Um, uh, I didn't know Joe as well as I knew Bob Nixon. I was fortunate enough to be invited to that um, historic tennis club um, that included Warren Lancaster, um, another incredible Rotarian, um, and Warren Waltz. And so I got to know Bob on the tennis court. Uh, he was quite a competitor, quite an athlete, quite an individual. Um, and so, yeah, like Michael, I just said, said it's, it's time to come back. So thank you all for keeping this club going. I'm um, looking forward to getting re-involved and meeting with some of the new people who you guys are meeting. I, I really want to echo where Michael and John are. Um, I want to, I don't, it's not going to really be appropriate in this service of life for Joe, so I'll tell it here. <laughs> when Joe was selected to be president-elect of this club, he came to me and asked me if I would want to be in leadership. And he got a lot of flack for wanting to do that. But he was a real champion for me at a time in my life and in this club where I had not necessarily ingratiated myself to apparently the right people. Time moves on. We all grew into our spots. We all grew into each other. Our fellowship deepened. Our interpersonal relationships deepened. But Joe was absolutely the quintessential Rotarian in the fact that he loved what we stood for. And he lived what Rotary stands for. And this is not in any way, shape, or form to short uh, Dr. Robert Bob Nixon. I can't tell you all the things that Bob did, but Bob did a whole hell of a lot of stuff, not just for the club, not just for this community, but for people, because he believed in people. He served, both of them served this country in the armed forces, and they should be allotted for the fact that they are important veterans that stood up for our country. Bob would bring his um, tractor down and till the flower beds well in advance so the rest of us didn't have to fuss with it when we got down there, though we still griped. Bob did a lot. You know that guy was skiing on his own up at Mount Hood in his 80s. He was a wonderful human being. And I believe, if, I, if, if my facts are correct, he sold a practice that belonged to his father to Don Compton. So the Nixon Dental um, Clinic has been in this town since the 1800s. These are two giants that we have the ability to stand on their shoulders and reach to become better humans and better Rotarians. And I am better for knowing them and I will deeply miss them both. I would be remiss not to say something about Joe. Um, Judy called me last night and showed the news, and we had a really long conversation because Joe and I had a very special connection over scholarships, and um, it's just around the corner, so I find myself very sad um, thinking about that on my own. But Joe hated being retired. I don't know if you guys knew that. He hated it. He just hated it. He complained and complained all the time because um, what he did in his profession defined him. He was an attorney. He was a judge. Um, and what was really neat was that Rotary filled that gap for him. And it, it provided him that purpose. And so I think there was a time a year or two ago, I don't remember, when we were asked for our why, you know, and I thought, that's really hard to define why we're here. And just like Mike coming back and John coming back, I found myself going like, the Rotary provides a purpose for all of us in our communities um, professionally to give back with clarity on our purpose whether it's international or whether it's local, 
And um, I just, my hope is, hearing of the passing, not only you know of Bob and Joe, but Jerry earlier this year, um, that we remember as younger Rotarians what we're doing here and be able to carry that legacy forward for this club. So. I want to just say something about uh, Bob Mixon also, uh, what Janine and Mike and uh, we have all talked about. But Bob and I got together just before concourse number three. Right. If you remember the steel stakes, remember the steel stakes? Well, we had a, a Bob and I had a key to Forest Grove Iron. So on Sunday, three weeks before the concourse three, we went in and cut and made all of those, the first batch of stakes for that. Bob was an amazing person in building stuff and doing things for rotary. The tractor with the generator, the special drill, the fetch mechanism to roll it up on the truck and put it in there. Without Bob's um, ingenuity, his engineering skills, and, and the things that he did for Concourse, we would have had a hard time uh, doing some of the things that we do. Uh, so, again, to Bob. Uh, Sue and Linda are both here in town. It's his two daughters. They've come back. And they're, they're here uh, making arrangements and we're looking forward to seeing and talking to them also. I've got one more thought on Joe. And I, I, all of you have echoed my sentiments too. I wish I had said more at first, but I just didn't want to say. But everything, you, all, I mean, all you guys said was great and right on target. But So I will uh, close out the remarks on Joe with one thing. One day, many years ago, at Costco, and I I heard his laugh, and he had an, an absolutely one of a kind laugh, didn't he? And I didn't, I couldn't even see Joe at that time. He was somewhere in that store laughing. And I thought, no, oh, Joe's here. <laughs> That's a great reminder. <laughs> 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 that was a pretty good 